greetings from the Magic Kingdom. Went home and showered, Josh taught a class, and then we hopped on a bus and we came to the Magic Kingdom. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy to see the castle. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we saw it, but it still makes me happy every single time. We didn't think we were gonna be able to ride rides because we thought it'd be really busy. I mean, it is busy, you can tell that it's busy. Main Street always looks busy, even if the rest of the park isn't. But the um, ride times didn't look to be that bad. So we're gonna see what we can do, what kind of rides we can get on. We have a dinner reservation later at the uh, Skipper's Canteen which was last minute. We actually got that this morning, I think it was. Yeah, yeah we decided that this is where we were gonna come. We weren't sure if we were gonna come into this park or if we were gonna go to Epcot after we went to Animal Kingdom today. We decided on Magic Kingdom. That way we can have a night here because we won't be able to on Sunday when we have the morning because we have to leave to go to the airport before it gets dark. And Magic Kingdom is beautiful at night. It's worth being here for. They still have not opened up Casey's Corner, which is... Oh, oh confectionery still closed too. Yeah, that's the ice cream place over here on the right of Main Street. And then on the left of Main Street, if you're heading towards the castle, is uh, Casey's Corner. It's like hot dogs, hot dog nuggets. They're hot dog nuggets, they're great. Corn dog nuggets, yeah. Corn dog nuggets, excuse me, are great. But... In the meantime, let's go find some fun. We headed into Tomorrowland because we wanted to ride the People Mover and it wasn't running. I mean, it was lightly raining at the time, so maybe they closed it because of that. Um, it w I checked the times on it when we were on the bus and it said it was running. So, five minutes. yeah, so it'll probably be back up later. We'll hit it later. I like it at night anyway. I mean, I wanted to do it in the day and the night. Instead, we were heading to the Haunted Mansion, which is all indoors and would not be affected by the rain. And I don't think ghosts would mind the rain too much anyway. We're walking right in the middle of the Poop River in Liberty Square. <laughs> I've told the story before, but this brownish color asphalt or ground versus the red over here is meant to simulate, since they didn't have sewage in uh, colonial times, or sewage systems, I should say. They didn't have sewer systems. They had sewage, and all that sewage just sort of went to the middle of the road. People just walked around it. And that is what this is supposed to be. So, we're walking on the Poop River. There it is, the Haunted Mansion. And it's only 15 minutes standby, which is pretty awesome, which usually means it's a walk-on. I'm curious to see if the pre-show's back. During the pandemic, they did not have the pre-show. You just kind of walked through but uh, I've been hearing that some pre-shows are back and oh no, it's not a walk-on because there are people here. Anyway, it is uh, going to be interesting to see what happens with the pre-show. I will follow up with you and let you know. Hey look, there's people on Tom Sawyer Island. I don't think they were letting people go over there because you'd have to get too close on the boats, but look at that. Speaking of boats, there goes the Liberty Bell over there. But that's nice. One time Josh and I just wanted to find a nice place to rest and hang out for an hour or two in the parks. And we went across to Tom Sawyer's Island on the boats and we went to one of their docks. And one that was being used for training so there wasn't actual boats going back and forth. I mean there was but it was just somebody training. They weren't bringing people across. And we just sat on these rocking chairs and watched Big Thunder Mountain. And we watched the boat go by a few times. It was incredibly relaxing and really nice. Uh, it was a nice day too, which helped, but we were also in the shade. So it was some Disney magic, just sitting and enjoying the ambiance, not riding a ride or doing an attraction, just enjoying the view. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. There's no turning back now. Well, it looks like they still have stanchions up and the door is wide open, even though we're not going anywhere. 
Um, so it doesn't look like the pre-show is back at Haunted Mansion currently. Can confirm, no pre-show. That's okay. We've seen it a number of times. That is one that I enjoy watching every time though. There are others where I'm like, just get on with it. Like Tower of Terror, I love that one, but I've seen it so much, I just want to get on the ride. Haunted Mansion uses a vehicle system called the Omni Mover that is continuously moving. So one of the reasons why it's a people eater, is they call it, because you can continuously load people. Now they can slow it down or stop it if people need assistance or if an emergency happens. But otherwise, you walk onto a moving platform that's moving at the same speed as the, the Doom buggies. Not Dune, but Doom buggies. And so everyone can just hop in a car and keep going and they don't have to stop the ride to let people on or off. One of these is a camera, the one at the very end. So I need to put this down for a moment. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> it's going to be me and my camera. I'm not sure if you can tell because it's dark, but those are eyes that are lit up and then the eyes turn into the wallpaper. I know you can't see the wallpaper, but the wallpaper has a pattern on it that looks like faces and the eyes turn into the wallpaper. And then you come to the endless hallway, which you probably can't see much either. I'm sorry. Great video, everyone. That clock has a lot of issues. And coolies from last Halloween. Awaken the spirits with your tambourines. Tolls in a pile. Let there be music from regions beyond. I love the dancing ghosts down there, but my favorite is the two gunmen up here. All of a sudden they sort of turn and point and shoot to eat at each other. Place to Please stop. remain seated in your doom buggy. We will proceed in just a moment. So, as you go through the attic, you see the bride and a number of people that she married, but their heads will disappear. And we have time, been unavoidably detained by friends. Anytime spirits. you see her in the time next marriage, she always has another pearl body. necklace. Like she just collects we them. Continue um, so there's a narrative going on here that she, you know, remarries and kills. And then that gets to, to here, pretty much here, where it's a projection on like a dummy. And she says normal wedding things, which, you know, would be romantic, since she says them all sinister like. If you read any history of the Haunted Mansion, you'll learn that they were trying to decide between making it spooky and scary, or making it sort of fun and lighthearted with singing ghosts and such. And ultimately, they decided on both. Uh, so you go through the house, and it's very spooky, and you get to that scene with the bride, and she's being threateningly ghosty. And then you fall out of the window, which is what's happening now. And then you come into the graveyard where all of the ghosts are dancing and singing. And it's a whole lot of fun. One of my favorite things is we pass the dog that is really scared. But then over here, I, can't know, I don't know if you can see them. There's some cats. And above the ghost here is a, uh, are owls. And they're totally in on it. Like the cats and the owls, no problem at all. The dogs are all scared, but oh, there's a ghost dog back there. Oh, 
what's also nice is when you pass certain scenes, you you can hear individual voices pick up the melody. So it, it's not just a big chorus singing. You can pick out individual voices in different parts coming from different ghosts. There they are, the hitchhiking ghosts. Gus, Ezra, and er, Gus, Ezra, and Phineas. The Haunted Mansion has its own shop called Memento Mori. Oh, I guess the entrance is around the corner so they can limit the number of people. It's interesting being in this sort of half pandemic and half not, where nobody has to wear masks, but you're still supposed to social distance, although the lines don't have the social distancing markers and stores are controlling the number of people that come in, even though they're probably not controlling how close people are to each other. It's, it's interesting, like you don't know what to expect, so you just, how to pay attention. So we have Foolish Mortal stuff and another puzzle set. Oh man, that's cool. Four 500 piece puzzles. How much did you say this was? 35. 35. Oh man, this would be perfect for the cruise. Oh, speaking of which, the next video I make might be a cruise. We'll see if it, it actually you, goes. It's supposed it to be in October. $9 a puzzle. That's not $9 good. a puzzle for 500 piece puzzle. Oh man, that, that is so it. cool. That's why I wanted to show it to you. How much? 55. 55? 80. 85. Oh man, that thing looks I mean, awesome. The pattern though. is just, you're not going to find it anywhere no, else. That's man, why. I love this thing. Oh, I am going to think about this. Let's right. begin annual pass holder discount. This? No, no, no. Oh, the shirt. This? I think oh, that shirt is really cool. I'd love to wear, like I said, wear that on my cruise. That seems like a good cruisy shirt, right? <laughs> okay. Wow. I'm definitely think about that. 20% If they have a size for, that I can fit into. I knew I saw the Oh, because it's the singing busts. Yes. Now I get it. And a Madame Leota head. We're walking through Frontierland, and the music all of a sudden picks up. And that usually means that there's a cavalcade coming. I mentioned this in my last vi video that my unpopular opinion, although I think probably a lot of people agree with me, is that I would rather than keep the cavalcades around rather than bring back the parades. I like that. One thing goes by, you can wave, everyone stops and kind of looks at it, but a parade is never in your way, and there's not a whole bunch of people lining up for hours beforehand, and you can get cool things like... Yes. I really am this handsome, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Moana, and Wendy, Peter Pan, Oh, not Wendy, Alice, jeez. I, I do that all the time. I don't know why I don't get that name wrong. And Mary Poppins. Practically perfect. And Aladdin. <laughs> and then, you know, people, it's wonderful. I just love how quick it is. We're trying to figure out what to do or what to do next. We have dinner in about 40 minutes, so we don't want to get too far. Um, this ride is uh, the Splash Mountain, of course, and I don't want to, well, I mean, we couldn't, this is like 60 or 70 minutes or something on a hot day like this, it's always gonna have a long time, and we don't wanna be wet all day, so we might ride it later before we head back to the hotel, just in case we get wet, uh, but we're not riding it now. And then over there, if you continue down this bridge, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is over there, and uh, oh, <laughs> this is where the, uh, logs let out and uh, there's some screamers on that boat I love watching these people come down and they wipe their faces and they get sprayed we never get soaked on it but boy sometimes I will get sprays in my face like like somebody has a spray bottle and they're continuously spraying me but I've never actually been soaked on this the key is heavy people like me in the back and that way you don't go lashing into the water when you hit. If I was in the front, then me and everyone else would be soaked. I like this Splash Mountain better than the one at Disneyland, because Disneyland is you sit in single file rows, whereas here you sit side by side, and I like that better. Anyway, I was saying that we were trying to figure out what to do, because we have about 40 minutes until our reservation. We don't want to go too far, because it's in the area we're in right now. And so we have some choices. We did Haunted Mansion already. 
Uh, there is uh, Splash Mountain, but the wait is gonna be too long for that. Big Thunder, probably, we probably could do it, but we'd be pushing it. Whereas last time we looked, Pirates was only 20 minutes, and that's actually perfect. 20 minutes and then like, I don't know, 10 minute ride? I forget how long it is. It's shorter here than in Disneyland. So maybe it's only like 10 or 13. Anyway, that's perfect. That'll put us right where we need to be for our dinner. Then we can go check in a little early, I'm sure. If we were able to get a reservation this morning for today, it means that they're not gonna be full. Oh, Pirates is 15, this is perfect. So we're going to enjoy some, one thing I like pi about Pirates is it has an air conditioned queue once you get far enough in. 15 minutes. I'm always curious about what they're going to do post pandemic. Like these separators were put up because people couldn't stand six feet apart side to side in this queue because it goes up, you know, back and forth, zigzags. But now that we're kind of getting away from that, are they going to leave them up? Like they're professionally done. They look fine. Are they going to leave them up or will they take them down again? Will they do that all over the parks? Just interesting questions that I'm curious what those answers will eventually be. One thing about this queue that I like is not only is it air conditioned, that's a plus, but it is you're walking through a fort, like an old Spanish fort. So there's cannons and there's an armory and over here are swords just kind of neat. I like this kind of attention to detail. Disney World, uh, you know, a few years back and continuously puts effort into their queues for interesting things to look at for theming as you go through them. I mean, these could all be blank walls. This could just be, you know, line back and forth stanchions, but they don't do that. They make it interesting to walk through and give it a whole theme. Oh, there's a giant cask. Yeah, here's another armory. So you have guns in these for when they're being raided. Everyone comes here and grabs a gun and maybe a drink. And then you can go man your cannon. I enjoy how this rock formation looks like a skull from here. But then as you go past it, it's just a series of rocks that don't look like a skull at the other angles. Pretty nifty. I shall take this portrait, son, but it's starting to cover my expenses. 
wind to change the jewels. Ring up, me hot as yo-ho. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a bar and stuff for me. Sure enough, I got splashed by a cannonball explosion. I always do. Josh got a little bit. I had a whole bunch land on my left shoulder and arm. It happens. You're not gonna get like soaked on that ride. It's never gonna dip or anything, but you might occasionally get a splash at you as a surprise. We've checked in for our dinner. They have a essential virtual check-in now. It tells you, hey, it's time to check in. And you push a button and answer a few questions like if you have dietary restrictions, how many are adults versus kids, that sort of thing. And then they'll send me a text message and a message through the app once it's ready. So we're wandering that way over to the Skipper's Canteen, which is not that far from Pirates. One of the nice things about the Skipper Canteen area is they have these really nice, comfortable chairs that you can sit in while you wait. There's an indoor seating area too, but we're opting to sit outside. And across the way is the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, which apparently today has had over 6,000 people go on it. We haven't done it since the very first time we ever came to Disney World, which is on our honeymoon, uh, well, actually almost exactly seven years ago, but uh, we have never done it since, and surprised like 6,000 people have today, because it's really just a bunch of stairs. So we're in the mess hall of the Jungle Cruise, or Skipper's Canteen. It's connected to the Jungle Cruise. And so this is the mess hall area. Last time we were here on our last trip, we ate in there, which is like, there's a library and like a sitting room. There's different rooms with different theming. I always like the theming in here. It's supposed to be like an adventurer's club where the jungle skippers come to when they're not jungle skippering. I mentioned that it's kind of an extension of the Jungle Cruise, and I was gonna say that they used to do jokes and puns when you'd first come in here, and they hadn't in a long time, but our waiter, or our person who came and sat us, did actually tell us a number of jokes and puns. Like, there was a, there's a fan in the front that's kind of, rather than being like a spinny fan, it's this fan that just sort of goes back and forth. And he says, you know, it's a unique fan. He's like, it's not something you see every day, unless you're me and you see every five minutes. And he came over to drop us off at the table and he said, uh, you know, sit anywhere you like. I recommend a chair, <laughs> that sort of thing. I enjoy that kind of humor. And our waitress has been telling jokes too. <laughs> it's awesome. So there is a secret menu here um, that we had read about somewhere. They have a Brazilian cheese bread as an appetizer, among other things, but the Bra Brazilian cheese bread is delicious. And it's not on the menu. You just have to know that you can order it. The only way we found out is we came with friends and they ordered it and we really enjoyed it. So we get it every time now. And we're just gonna split a dinner because uh, we usually get two separate dinners, but the dinners here are big enough that we can split them. So we get an appetizer with a bunch of cheese bread, and then we're gonna split something called the Taste Like Chicken because it is, which is a, a fried chicken breast. Then uh, that's gonna be enough for us. And we won't be so full that we can't get dessert, like a Dole Whip or something. As I was speaking, our Brazilian cheese bread showed up. Doesn't that look amazing? It comes with a chimichurri cream sauce. Take a bite, Josh. And I mean, we've had it before, but it'll show you what the inside looks like. Once Josh takes a bite, I will too. So it's just bread. <laughs> Filled with cheese. And you dip it in the sauce. It's amazing. So when you come here, I suggest you, you uh, order it. So we're more than halfway through eating our taste like chicken because it is essentially it's a um, chicken breast that's been breaded um, and fried. It's served with a uh, rice and then vegetables too. And the vegetables have water chestnuts and I love water chestnuts. It's good. I was expecting it to be less sweet because the... Um... Oh, thank you. We got an extra side of the sauce. The, the sauce is described as a chili lime, I think? Chili something. I was expecting it to be... It's not necessarily spicy spicy, but not necessarily sweet either, but it's good. And they brought us an extra plate because we were splitting it. So our wedding anniversary is in about 10 days. Yes. So we were treating this as a anniversary trip and they gave us a little lava cake to show how much they lava us uh, for our anniversary. Isn't that nice? Just a couple bites and there's like a little sugar oh, oh, oh. <laughs> kind of thing on the top. Looks delicious. Oh my, oh my. 
this is the unusual fan that I mentioned earlier in the video that our cedar talked about. It just kind of goes back and forth, not fast enough to blow any air, so I'm not sure what the purpose of this thing is, but that's what he was talking about. Hi, it's Chris from the future here. As we wander by the Skipper Canteen again, I am reminded that I did not say how much we paid for our meal. It was 36 bucks. Dinner was, the chicken was 24, and the cheese bread, cheese bread was 12. Correct. And then we got 10% uh, off because we're annual pass holders. But 36 bucks plus tax and tip. All right, let's see what we want to do next. Big Thunder Mountain is 35 minutes, which is not that bad. It was 20 when I checked just a little bit ago. Uh, Splash Mountain has dropped to 40. That's not too bad. Jungle Cruise is 45. Uh, this is where we are, where that little dot is right there. And wow, Haunted Mansion's only five. That means it's a walk-on. Peter Pan is 40. That's pretty good for Peter Pan. Yeah. And let's see, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is only 50. It's usually over like two hours, but I think things are starting to wind down. We want to go to the People Mover. That is there. 10 minutes, that's not bad. That means it's going though. Space Mountain is 40. Little Mermaid is 10. That's Little Mermaid, right? Yep, 10. Winnie the Pooh is 20. You know what, actually Tomorrow these are not that bad. Land, people so we're gonna head over to Tomorrowland and go to the People Mover and then maybe so hit some of these ride. little rides well, so like the do, Little Mermaid we and- We on the way over. We might be back yeah, the whole way. yeah we might do Pooh too. Cool. Back in Tomorrowland. Oh, only 10 minutes for Buzz Lightyear's, which is a ride and a game. And the People Mover is moving. You can see it moving up there. It is not only moving, it is moving people. It is living up to its name. And the line doesn't look too bad. So let's go get our people moved. While we were walking over here, we stopped at the hub for some pictures in front of the castle with uh, one of the cast members. Because we have annual passes, we get the photo pass along with it. And um, one thing that was awesome is the person who was there, so there were people in front of us and one was like a mom and a little girl. And she was uh, doing a great job of posing the little girl. Like, hold your scepter like this, put your leg like that, put your hands together and make it look like you're doing a, like she knew exactly how to take what would just be a mundane picture of somebody standing in front of something and make it memorable and stand out amongst all the other pictures that they will take together today. That was, it was amazing. Uh, to watch somebody work like that, especially with a little kid, where I don't even think there was the they, there was a language where I thought there was a language barrier, and she still got her to pose incredibly. But it's that kind of Disney magic. Some people are just really good at things. Whee! You can see Tomorrowland down there. There's where we loaded right over there. It pretty much just does a tour of Tomorrowland, and you can see outside both ways. Space Mountain, that's the new Tron coaster over there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. They must know those people, they're waving. I mean, sometimes you wave at strangers, but they waved in a way that I think those people knew them. And then uh, this is just more Tomorrowland. There's the, the Speedway over there. And then it takes you inside some of the buildings too. There's Star Command where we had walked in. This building here used to be the uh, Stitch's Great Escape, which prior to that was Alien Encounter Extra Terror Rest Reel, which became Stitch's. And people never forgave them for that because apparently the original one was great and the Stitch's one was not so great. And then we get awesome view of the castle. Just before we go into the first inside area. Walt Disney's dream for an experimental prototype really took off. Progress City was the inspiration for Epcot, and many of its forward thinking ideas have been realized throughout Walt Disney. If your future is also cute dioramas, then you want to visit Star Traders, where you'll find the greatest goods from around the galaxy. And there's Star Traders down there. Now we're back outside the other side of the building. That's where we went and where those people are over there on the people mover. The Tomorrowland now we're Speedway. Out. The you can see the speedway the over here. And speed towards the checkered flag in your very own race car. Young girl, this is your chance to drive in the fast lane without worrying about getting a speeding ticket. More of the Tron coaster. It's coming along. I cannot wait for that. I don't 
know when it's supposed to be. I know the pandemic had stopped production for a while, but it's picked up again. Part of that coaster is inside and part of it's outside, but the outside part is still covered because otherwise, you know, it gets very rainy here in Florida. And we pass other people come from Uber cars. And now we're entering the Space Mountain. You can't really see this, but the Space Mountain cars are going up on the right and left of us. Which is pretty cool, actually. Starport 75, that's when Space Mountain came to Walt Disney World. Another castle shot there, we'll come around again. Up there is the Astral Orbiter, which is just a spinner ride, but you know, it's got a great view because it's so high up. You have to ride an elevator to get to it. Thanks, narrator. And more Tomorrowland down there. And the Joffreys. I love their uh, Kona Mocha. Normally I'm not a big coffee fan, but it's a, kind of like a coffee chocolate frozen drink. It's pretty good when you need some caffeine. Carousel of Progress. Inside the Carousel of Progress. It's a great rig, beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away. This legendary secular theater celebrates the progress that is made on Yay. Mars. I love people watching from the People Mover. Just seeing people down there. Looking down on them. The way the bell looks down on the people in her family. Oh my goodness. That dude down there is wearing a shirt that looks like the same shirt that Dale wears in Chippendale Rescue Rangers. See him? That is so awesome. There is no way that there's enough room in that thing for this woman's head. And you go through a little bit of the Buzz Lightyear ride. And when you come out of this tunnel, you get an amazing view of the castle. May I have your attention? Ooh. Ooh, we're going to a very this nice view of the castle. temporarily and will resume motion at any time. Please remain seated Pretty nice, for your huh? own safety. Thank you. That's so funny. When we were walking in here, we saw people stopped at exactly the same spot and we thought that it might not be running. How interestingly coincidental. But yeah, so you can just see the, uh, not Tomorrowland Terrace, the Starlight Cafe. That's that right there. They have okay food. It's, usually, it's a lot of theme park food, but we've had some things there that are very delicious. And then of course the castle's over here, where we were just looking at it a second ago. And then Main Street is over there. Well, that's really more the hub. Up. It's a clever unloading and loading mechanic. There's a circular area here where we'll get on off. This will open up in just a second. And over there, people are walking along the moving walkway to get on. So it's actually pretty clever. They use the same kind of thing at Spaceship Earth in Epcot. And now we leave the land of tomorrow and head into the land of fantasy. And straight ahead of us is the teacups or Mad Hatter's Tea Party, I think it is, yeah. Or no, Mad Tea Party. It's different in different places, like every park has a version of this ride. It's fun, we like it. We haven't done it in the last few trips, but it doesn't really change that much. It has to be like a five minute wait before we'll ride it usually. Just walk on it, spin for two minutes and then you're done. I wonder when they're gonna reopen Cheshire Cafe over here. Slowly, I think things are gonna reopen, but they're not there yet. We're working our way over here because Winnie the Pooh is up here and to the left. All right, 20 minutes, many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Across the way over there is Seven Dwarfs. That's part of the queue there. The entrance is over there. I'm not sure how long it is. You usually can tell how busy this park is by how long the wait is for that ride. Mm -hmm. 
quick. Read it, read it. If you don't read it, you're not gonna know what's up. Oh no. Lost forever. One day, I'm the Eagle Wood. Everybody dies. If you ask me, he'll never reach that point. Find me! Find me! Oh dear! <laughs> Come out with me! Continuing through Fantasyland, I'm actually taking a shortcut. I'm gonna go not through the castle, but past the castle that way. Head back over to Adventureland so I can get myself a Kukumara float, which is uh, coconut soft serve in pineapple juice with blue curacao and uh, like a cake pop on top. It's really good. That's what I felt like having. Because we're coming back on Sunday, I'll have my usual orange Dole Whip with vanilla treat then. Felt like something different today. I left Josh behind because he's getting the soft serve lime, which is over at Storybook Treats, which is just outside of Winnie the Pooh, where we just were. So, uh, we can each get our own without having to wait for the other. Like I mentioned, rather than going through the castle and then going through the hub and crossing over, I took kind of a shortcut down this path, which leads you into Liberty Square. Here it is, the Kakamura float. Uh, that's a coconut soft serve. There's pineapple at the bottom, but it doesn't look like pineapple because it has blue curacao in it. And it comes with a little cake pop. It has like a little cheeky face on it. I've had these before, they're really good. It's not my favorite dessert here, but I'll get my favorite on Sunday. I wanted to have something different today. We are slowly making our way towards the front, but we want to do a little bit of shopping first. Looking for keychains, since my keychain just broke. And we're gonna look for a calendar too. Maybe they'll have one this time of year. Not sure yet, but we're gonna look just in case. But rather than going directly to the shops, we decided to go to the hub so we could take a look at the castle all lit up because there's nothing like Magic Kingdom at night. Ah, Magic Kingdom in the magic hour. Like the weather right now is perfect. The sun has pretty much started to go down. I mean, it is, it's just getting darker now. The humidity doesn't even feel that bad. The temperatures dropped a little bit. It's only 82 right now, which sounds hot, but it feels pretty good right now. And then you have the beautiful, beautiful castle starting to be lit up. And if you turn around, the main street is all lit up as well. So we're gonna go wander down main street, do a little bit of shopping, just slowly make our way towards the front. Magic Kingdom closes, oh, there's Tomorrowland straight ahead over there. Magic Kingdom closes at nine o'clock tonight. It is 825-ish. So now seems to be a good time to sort of wander out. They won't start kicking people out until an hour after it closes. So even though it closes at nine, you don't really have to leave until 10 if you don't want to. And then they just sort of brush people out. But uh, we uh, would like to get home, get a little bit more rest and start tomorrow fresh at 
Hollywood Studios. I never think it's too bad out there. And then you come into the air conditioning and you're like, oh, this is what it feels like to be in air conditioning. Uh, we made it into the Emporium. I'm gonna go find keychains somewhere, but I do like to look around at the rest of the merchandise. Pride section here. And they have a pretty big pride section this year. I think I mentioned earlier that they didn't, they weren't open during Pride last year, so everything was on sale. Everything's full price. I should have bought more last year. Lanyards. I like that t-shirt. Love the rainbow collar. That's really nice. That's okay. Just I don't laugh. like the gray. I think the gray is kind of boring. But the t-shirt, I like the arms and the collar. Let's see. Not mediums and smalls. I am not fitting in mediums and smalls. I've seen a lot of people with these bags. Those are pretty cool. Uh, mugs. I don't like what's inside. Of course, colorful Mickey's. The hat, of course. Beach towel. Mugs. I give uh, a couple of my friends uh, a pair of those mugs for Christmas. Two years ago. Last Christmas. Oh, fanny pack. Hey, I saw somebody with that fanny pack earlier today. I like the rainbow zipper. Yeah, the rainbow zipper is cool and the rainbow... Um, of course, I'm sorry. The rainbow kind of belt is really cool too. And... Oh, here's more of these ones. I saw something that surprised me because I wasn't sure what it was and I'm still not sure. Like this kind of looks like a butter dish, but it's not. And I think it's a napkin holder, but look at this warning. Caution, not for food, may poison food. Like, I don't, I guess, I don't know. What is this thing? Let me know in the comments what you think this thing is. I think it's a napkin holder, maybe? I can't find any. Wanted to do one last video of Main Street and the castle at night. It's so pretty off in the distance there. Eh, we'll be back. We'll see it in a couple of days, but not like this at night. We'll have to leave before it looks like this. It's one of my favorite sites. Always will be. Disney is my happy place. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. One time we want it.